I did a speedrun of this official SAT test to see how fast I can finish it while still getting a perfect score. Hi, I'm Ryan, and I got a 1570 on my SAT. The key to getting a top score is to do tons of practice tests and memorize all the shortcuts so that you can finish the test faster. If you're interested in getting access to real SAT tests, just click the link in my description below. So let's go on to the first problem. You're looking for what is the weight when the length is nine centimeters. So it doesn't have a specific marker, but you can just roughly put a nine and roughly look that it's seven, which they're all whole numbers, so it's obviously B. Then we can go on to the second problem. It tells you there's two different line segments. And basically the idea is that when you add up the two line segments, they're supposed to add up to 120. So all of the other ones are either individuals or they're subtracting. So that's why D is the only one where you're adding the two line segments. And here's a quick visual. For number three, here you're already given that X is four. So all you have to do in this case is plug in X, which is four over four plus two, which is three. And since you're given the X value and you now know what the Y value is, it's four over three or B. And we can go on to number four now. You're looking at which of the graphs is the graph of two X plus six. So one thing you can look at is either the slope or the Y intercept. In this case, I looked at the slope, which was positive two, which means that as you go more towards the right, the Y value should be getting greater. So here, see, as you go towards the right, it's getting bigger, so that works. All the other ones, when you go towards the right, they're going down, they're going more negative, so that would be a negative slope. So that's why all of the other answers don't work, and it's only A. Now for number five, we can see that we're given the graph of f of x, and we have to find the graph of f of x plus two. So when it says plus two, what you should be remembering is that whenever you have a value of f of x, the new graph should be two more than that value or should be shifted upwards two units. So for example, here it goes up by two and all these other points go up. While this one, it goes to the left. This one, it completely inverts. And this one, it goes even more to the left. Since we're only looking for vertical transformations, the answer is A. Now we go on to number six. Here, we're given a function and we just have to plug in a value, pretty simple negative one to the sixth power is just one, so the answer is C. Now for number seven, which value is a solution to the given equation? So what you want to see is which values of X equals zero. And in this case, if you plug in four, that'd be zero, which is zero. And if you plug in negative two, it'd also be zero. So that's why the possible choices were either four or negative two, not two or zero. The thing is, when you plug in four, the denominator becomes zero. And zero, and you can't divide anything by zero. So the answer can't be four, and the answer has to be D or negative two. Now let's go on to eight. Here, you kind of have to know what the equation of a parabola is, or the equation of a quadratic. So here, basically, what I did was take the center point, which is in most standard equations, what you would use, which is, I wrote four, six, but it's actually six, four. And so we can see here, six is put here and four is put here. So that's why this would be the answer. This one, D also has six and four, but as I crossed out, there was a minus. Well, since it's going up by four, it would be positive. That's just something you need to memorize and yeah. Another thing you could tell though is that there was a minus, which means that the graph would be going downwards. Well, this one doesn't have any minus, so it would be going upwards. And since this graph is going downwards, if you didn't know for sure the equation, you could just see minus versus plus. Now for number nine, where given that ABC are similar, but ADE is similar to ADE, so given angle B, we know what angle D is because when two triangles are similar, then they have the same angle measures. So it's also 60 or D. Next set. Which equation represents this relationship? So what you could do is use rough estimates. What I did was use an exact value. I used 80 and 30,000. You could also use 40 and 15,000, both work. Since we know that P is 
the dependent variable and a is the independent variable. I create up the equation P equals MA where we're trying to find the slope or any of these values. Since we know what a certain value is, 80 and 30,000, we can plug those into the equation and we get 375 as our answer. Now let's go on to 11. We can see my approach was simplifying this 2n plus 3, making the 3 go under the n by making 2 plus 3n over n. Another faster way, actually, would have been to subtract both sides by 3. So we would have gone p minus 3 equals 2 over n. And then you can invert the equations, and it would be much faster than what I did. But yeah, so this one wasn't the fastest way, but this was also a viable way. And you can just see all my work. You subtract, then you divide, and you get 2 over p minus 3. Now let's go on to number 12. Here, we're given that there's supposed to be no solution. And what you need to remember is for a system of equations to have no solution, it means that when they continue on forever, they will never intersect, which means that the slopes have to be the same. And as you can see from this diagram, if the slopes are the same, then they'll never meet. So since the slope of the first equation is three, the second equation also has to be three. Now for number 13, you just distribute x, root x times root x is just x, and then root y times root x is just root x, y, a. Now number 14. Here I did this little diagram where each of the days he loses a total amount of his memory of words. What you can do mentally is just remember that every day you're losing 10%. So the first day, 10% of 20, 200 is 20. So he would have had 180 and then 10% of 180 is 18. So you subtract 180 and then you get 162. So you didn't need to draw this diagram. You could have just done it mentally. Number 15. Here, you need to remember the equation of a circle. So for you to do that, you need to convert this x squared, y squared, all these quadratics into a simple x minus x squared and y minus two squared. So what I did was write out, writ out, wrote out the common, common terms. So x squared minus 16x and then y squared minus four y. And to complete it, you have to add 64 if you remember the equation of a quadratic. And so you have to, so now that you know this is 64 and this has to be four, you can add it up 68, but we're only given 32. So the leftovers, as we see 32 minus 68 is negative 36. So this is what be our equation. You add it to that side, you get six squared, which if you knew, that is the radius. Number 16. So here, since it's absolute value, there are usually two answers of x, but since it's only asking for the positive value, it's only 32. Number 17, remember you're looking for something that's parallel, so the slopes are equal, so it's seven. Now number 18, this one I also took a little bit of a longer time. What you want to do is, instead of solving for p, you just want to convert two over three p into three p. And what you can do that is by multiplying every term by nine over two, which is what I did. But before that, you could simplify it by saying two over three p is equal to six, just subtract four on both sides and then multiply by nine over two. So it would be six times nine over two or 27. Now the last two problems. Here, you're only looking for d. So you're only looking for terms that have x squared in it. And as you can see from this equation, when you multiply five by three x squared, you get an x squared as a, as a part of the term. And then when you multiply minus six x times x, you also get an x squared in the term. You can try it out for yourself, but what you can know mentally is that if you multiply any of the other terms like x cubed times x, or for example, um, negative, six negative six x times three x squared, they would all have terms that is not x squared, it would be either x cubed or x to the fourth. So since we're only looking at x squared, you can just take the one, the two terms we got, which is negative six and 15, add them together, nine, which is our answer. Now number 20. Now this is the one of the harder questions because the test doesn't usually have trigonometry, but this was one where maybe it has it once in a while. So it's always useful to learn it. 
Here it's asking for tan of x. Tan stands for opposite over adjacent, or if you could remember it, SOKATOA, O A, opposite over adjacent. So in this case, the opposite of this x angle would be this unknown opposite side, and the adjacent side would be the one touching x, which is not the hypotenuse, which would be 15. Since we don't know what this is yet, you can use the Pythagorean theorem, 15 squared plus y squared equals 17 squared to figure out what this y or this unknown variable is, which is y squared equals 64 or y is 8. It has to be positive because in real life, you can't have a negative length. And so the answer is just 8 over 15. Done in 13 minutes. Let me know what shortcuts you'll be using for this test.